follow the daily routine of Steve Kaufman, a person who speaks over 20 languages to see if I can learn languages faster. Steve Kaufman is one of, if not the greatest polyglot of this generation. By speaking so many languages, he has truly embodied what it takes to master the art of language learning. But the real question is, is how does he do it? My name is Yama and as an avid language learner, I really look up to Steve and his practices. Today, I wanted to see what I could learn from him by following the steps to his daily routine. I'm currently studying three languages, all at varying levels, and I want to see if applying his method will allow me to speed up my language learning process. Coincidentally, I also come from the same city as Steve Kaufman, so that's gotta give me some sort of home field advantage, right? Anyway, let's just see how all this goes. So what even is Steve Kaufman's daily routine? Good question. He's touched on his routine in the past and it's pretty minimalistic, but based on some very important philosophies that I want to dive in with this video. The first principle is that mornings are very important. The morning is a big part of my language learning day. Steve usually starts off his day by reviewing lessons and mistakes from the previous day, as well as listening to something easy to understand in the target language. After doing this for a short period of time, Steve does a short 7 minute workout while listening to a podcast in his target language. After this workout, Steve goes swimming in the ocean in the form of some cold exposure therapy and finally wraps up his morning with some breakfast while listening to some more languages. Although I'm gonna try to recreate his routine as best as possible, I don't have access to an ocean so I've replaced the cold plunge with a cold shower instead. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. I've also decided to substitute his 7 minute workout for a short run instead. Because if you couldn't tell, I am a few years younger than Steve Kaufman, I could probably use a little bit more serious exercise. This will also allow me to get some fresh air and touch some desperately needed grass. We're not trying to be Osu players out here. That's a wrap for his morning. It's pretty simple, I know. But honestly, I believe there's some brilliance in having a simple routine, because the people who try to min-max their routines based on Andrew Huberman or Hamza usually tend to quit because of the high difficulty. Having a simple yet effective routine is better because as a beginner, you can keep up with it a lot easier, which will help you build the necessary habits. Okay, we get it you dollar store Gordon Ramsay looking MF. Wanna tell us what Steve does for the rest of the day? Good question. Seeing as Steve does language learning full time, you can only assume that he spends most of his time learning languages, right? In reality, Steve actually prefers not to have a fixed schedule and instead simply listens to content while he's working on other things. One of Steve's most recognized theories is the idea of maximizing the consumption of your target language. This can be done by listening to the podcast, reading books, or even playing video games in your target language. SHUT THE fuck. The most important part is just finding a way to incorporate it into your everyday life. Our effort in language learning should not be focused on learning rules, studying rules, the way traditional language instruction does. He really encourages that we listen to languages as we do chores around the house in order to maximize the amount of content we're consuming. Steve claims that the whole point of consuming as much content as possible is that we need to get accustomed to the sound of the language and understand what people say when talking to us. The basic idea is that when you understand what the foreigner speakers say or write, your own speech or writing will follow easier. Okay, so it's currently day two, and I've just realized this, but Steve does a lot of listening throughout the day. As a person who doesn't really listen to anything but music, this has been a big challenge for me. I can already tell that it's gonna be very hard to immerse myself as much as Steve does throughout his day. I've incorporated this consumption into my daily schedule by filling up most of my activities with some sort of language immersion. When I'm washing the dishes, I'm listening to podcasts. When I'm watching YouTube, I'm watching it in French. Even when I'm doing my clan war attack, you best believe that my barbarians are speaking Spanish. Incorporating a language into our everyday lives allows us to recreate the environment that a child would find themselves when they're learning their first language. By mimicking this immersion, we can learn languages faster. Listening comprehension it is a tremendously important skill because if you're speaking to someone and we all want to speak in the language, if you can't understand what they're saying, what the other person is saying, then it's very uncomfortable and you can't have a very meaningful conversation. So I'm actually eating a Russian candy here, but did you know that eating Russian candy actually helps you learn the Russian language? No, it doesn't. I lied. Okay, now it's time to 
практиковаться со своим русским. Я знаю, что это уже немножко глупо звучит, потому что я уже говорю по-русски. Но есть одна вещь, которую я никогда не делал, потому что я вот просто был ленивый в прошлом. Но сейчас самое лучшее время научиться. Не упади стула. Но я не умею писать на русской клавиатуре. So, in order to follow Steve's methods, I've decided to combine the act of journaling with this new habit. Journaling is something I've been doing for over a year now in a physical journal, and I think it's time that I move it online. I'm basically killing two birds with one stone here. I'm learning how to type, and I'm journaling. Talk about optimal performance. Andrew Huberman who? Написал буквально 400 слов, наверное. Мне, наверное, пора уже спать. If I've learned one thing from Steve, it's that vocabulary is much more important than grammar. So therefore, to me, the simplest measurement of where I am in a language is how many words I know. When you learn a lot of new words naturally through reading and listening, your grammar will eventually just fall into place on its own. Steve says that the difference between people who are good at learning languages and people who are not is the ability to notice. What Steve often does in his studies is that he underlines key words and phrases that are noteworthy. Because even just doing the act of saving them to your word bank or whatever helps you notice. Once he reviews them later, some words he'll remember, some words he won't, but it all slowly builds up his ability to notice. He basically puts it like this. Imagine a forest with many paths and different kinds of trees and plants. The first time you walk through the forest, you are just concerned about not getting lost and don't notice the different trees and plants very clearly. The more you walk into the forest, the more comfortable you are there, the more things you notice. If you take different entries to the forest and walk the paths in different directions, you will notice more plants and more trees. After applying Steve's methods to my language learning, I've completely shifted my perspective of how I learn languages. I used to sit behind a grammar textbook and learn about all the different ways to use a subjunctive conjugation, but now I've completely opted for his natural approach to language learning. Passive vocabulary is the door to reading in the language, understanding movies in the language, having meaningful conversations in the language, all of which opens you up to meaningful, compelling input. Steve Kaufman also emphasizes the importance of attitude. He phrases it like this, learning a language is like falling in love. In fact, you have to be in love with the language to learn it well, and you will learn faster if you are faithful to it during the process. If you just use the language without loving it, you will not improve. If the goal is only to get a better job or to pass a test, you will not improve, at least not as much. Because when it comes to learning the language, in order to be able to use the language to communicate with people, the key is not to worry about how long does it take but rather to find a way to enjoy the language, to engage with enjoyable content. I completely agree with this train of thought because I've experienced it firsthand with what it's like to learn a language without loving it. I needed to learn French in order to graduate from my university, and so I treated the learning process as a chore and it tremendously slowed me down. For this routine, I specifically chose ways of learning that I found engaging. I only did what I wanted to do. For example, I quite enjoy watching YouTube videos, so I naturally decided to switch the language to French. The podcasts I listened to were all about topics that I was curious about, and if there were a few episodes that I didn't really vibe with, I just skipped them. This made language learning really easy. It's just like I'm doing something fun, you know? When you're learning, it's, it's kind of, I, I do believe in this sort of Taoist approach. Do what's easy, do what's effortless. Today marks the 14th day that I've started Steve's daily routine, and honestly, I'm quite impressed by my progress. Now, I'm sorry to disappoint those people who thought I would magically learn 20 languages in 14 days, but that's just not how language learning works. With the absurd amount of listening I've been doing, I've gotten really good at understanding spoken French. Parce que j'ai uh, entendu beaucoup de podcasts et uh, j'ai regardé beaucoup de vidéos en français. And on the side, I've definitely made some progress with how fast I can type right now in Russian. Now, I do wish I had more time to dedicate to learning Spanish, but it's currently just a side objective for me as the priority is to get my B2 in French. But hey, in the future, you'll definitely get to see me speaking more Spanish. Anyway, the thing I love most about Steve's routine is that it, was just, it wasn't very strict. If you look at other people's routines, they tend to be very rigid, like wake up exactly this time, go to the gym exactly this time, etc. 
Steve's routine allowed me to weave my language learning throughout the open spaces I have in my day. And most of the time, it didn't even feel like I was studying because I was just learning languages by doing my everyday tasks. It's only been 14 days, but I truly believe that my progress has spiked. A minor gripe I did run into with Steve's method was with my Spanish. I'm still very much a beginner, I only know a few words and I can't really understand spoken Spanish yet, so listening to podcasts was really difficult and I felt like I wasn't really getting a lot out of it. Also, I don't know what's up with Spanish people, but they talk really fast. In order to resolve this issue, I ended up switching my listening to watching YouTube videos instead. That's because there was captions and I could read the words as I'm listening, so it really helped my ability to notice. Also. I did grind a lot of Duolingo. Over the course of the two weeks, I've really come to realize that Steve is just a man who loves to do what he does. That's all he really is. I really enjoyed Steve's methods of focusing on consumption rather than grammar, and I truly think that everyone can take something away from him. Anyway, thank you for making it this far, and I hope to see you next time.